In this video, I'm going to introduce you to some different surface techniques that you could use on any project. Before we begin, I want to first talk about high relief and low relief. Every texture that you see on a ceramic art is going to have high relief and low relief. The difference is that high relief is an area that sticks out and low relief is an area that is recessed. So if you think about uh, this in terms of mountains and valleys, high relief would be the mountains on the surface and low relief would be the valleys. You'll also hear the terms additive and subtractive a lot. Additive just means that you're adding clay to the surface and subtractive means that you're removing clay. Not all techniques include additive and subtractive. However, all techniques have high relief and low relief. The first technique I want to introduce you to today is the subtractive layer technique. Subtractive layer means the removal of clay from the surface, but it reveals a layer underneath. So in other words, you're not cutting all the way through the side of a vessel. So you can remove small amounts, um, depending on how thick your walls are, to reveal texture. The tools that you might use to create a subtractive layer technique would be any tool that can carve, gouge, or scrape layers from your piece to create that pattern or texture. Ribbon tools, wire loop tools, a paper clip, uh, anything metal um, is helpful in removing clay. Things you may want to watch out for are the thickness of your piece. You don't mean to carve all the way through the walls. However, if you have a thin piece of clay, then you will likely carve all the way through the walls. The moisture level of this stage should be leather hard. Um, so that means not flexible, not bendable, um, but still has moisture, so it's soft enough to carve. The next technique I want to talk about is the subtractive cutout technique, very similar to the subtractive layer technique, except this time you are intentionally carving all the way through. So you can see several examples here of clay that has been completely removed from the surface to reveal uh, the cavity inside the vessel. In the subtractive cutout technique, the tools that you would use would be the same type of tools for the subtractive layer technique. Um, with the addition of potentially using a knife to cut out specific shapes. Things you want to watch out for are taking too much material out uh, because that can cause structural issues. So remember that the clay is what's making the uh, vessel stand up. And so in removing some of that clay, that can cause it to crack um, or collapse. The moisture level that you should be looking for when you're ready to remove clay is leather hard. The next technique I want to talk about is the additive technique. There are a lot of possibilities using an additive technique, but it simply means adding clay to the surface by way of scoring and slipping. For the additive technique, the only tools really that you would need to complete it would be uh, anything that is involved with scoring and slipping. So the use of a fork or needle tool um, and water or slip. Of course, you can create anything to add to the surface. So you may need other tools to um, accomplish those additional pieces. Things to watch out for are that if you are adding clay, you want to try to match the moisture level um, of the piece that you're adding to the piece that you are adding to. So if you have soft clay and you have a piece of clay that you're trying to add, it will work best if that piece is also soft. In other words, if you have leather hard clay, if your vessel is on the drier side, you'll want to create the pieces that you'll be adding and allow them to dry before you then add them to your vessel. You always want to make sure to score and slip well. Um, if you do not score and slip well, the pieces can fall off um, and blend whenever possible. The moisture level that you should be working with in the um, additive 
techniques are leather hard or semi leather hard, which means almost leather hard. The next technique I want to talk about is impressions. Um, impressions can come from anything. Anything that you press into soft clay uh, can leave an impression. So this is neither additive nor subtractive. However, you'll see in a lot of these examples, high relief and low relief. The tools that you would use in an impression is any tool that can push or indent and you can create repetition on your piece and that would make a pattern or a texture. Things you'll want to watch out for are pressure control. Uh, the potential for you to push through the wall is strong here, especially if the vessel is already created um, and especially if the clay is soft. So you want to support the pressure um, on the other side with your hand or another tool. Another word for that is to compensate the pressure. The moisture level of this um, technique should be semi-leather hard, um, so that is soft leather hard clay. Surface manipulation is the next technique, and surface manipulation really is uh, more structural than textural. So what that means is that you are using your hands and other tools to manipulate the form of your vessel. So that is typically uh, seen through putting one hand on the inside and pushing out and your ha other hand on the outside pushing in. So you can see examples here of um, clay that dips in and comes out and that was done by either pressing tools into the surface or pushing from the inside out. Tools that you would use are any tool that can indent or push to manipulate the form um, to create that unique structure that you're trying to accomplish. And things to watch out for are pressure control. Just like impressions, um, you might push through a wall. So you want to make sure that you compensate the pressure with your hand um, or another tool. The moisture level that you want to look for um, if you are working in surface manipulation is semi-leather hard. Um, even plastic would work. Um, so that is that the clay is soft enough to be manipulated. Leather hard clay would be too dry and too stiff uh, in order to accomplish this. The next technique is the sculptural approach. And this is the last technique that we will uh, talk about today. So the sculptural approach um, in ceramics really just means anything uh, any of these techniques used toward an end goal. So you can see a lot of additive techniques. You can see surface manipulation here. Um, you can see subtractive or carving techniques, um, but it's a combination of all of them to create a more sculptural vessel. Tools you might use in a sculptural approach are multiple tools, any tools that could sculpt, indent, carve, subtract, or push to manipulate the form to create a unique structure. The things you wanna look out for, um, typically when you are creating something sculptural, you're adding a lot of clay. Um, you wanna look out for air pockets. You also want to be aware of pressure control. Um, you don't wanna push through those walls, so you may wanna make sure to compensate for the pressure. You also want to be aware of the wall thickness. So in thinner areas, there's not a whole lot of wiggle room. Um, with thicker clay, it's going to be a little bit stronger. The moisture level to work toward um, in the sculptural approach would be semi-leather hard, so soft and movable clay, um, but not so soft as when you started, or leather hard clay, which would be ideal um, in carving or removal of any clay. And finally, just to conclude, combinations of any of these techniques can be used together to meet your goals. So you can use additive and subtractive techniques to accomplish whatever it is that you are trying to accomplish. You can look for inspiration for textures and for patterns in nature. Um, you could look around your room. You could even take various objects and press them into clay to see what would make the, a good texture.